Why does ethanol make more power than gas? Why do you see cars tuned with ethanol? Why do you see cars tuned with ethanol blends? In this video, I'm gonna give you guys a full explanation so you guys can have a full understanding of how and why ethanol makes more power, whether or not it's good for your car, and basically just everything you need to know. Now, there are a few videos out there like this. They usually talk about whether or not ethanol is bad for your engine, which we will mention at the end of the video, but that's not the whole story. You really need to understand why ethanol is so good for your engine when you're trying to make power, and we're not gonna get so in depth that I'm gonna show you guys all the equations, but I'm basically gonna create a layman's term translation from one of my college engineering textbooks because why not fully understand to a solid degree why ethanol from an engineering and physics perspective generates more power. We're gonna talk about it. By the end of the video, guys, you will have a full understanding and you'll actually have some knowledge about whether or not you wanna tune with ethanol. And maybe even this will help you decide what kind of cars you wanna buy in the future because ethanol reacts differently with different types of injection on cars. We're sitting in front of my 2022 WRX, which is a direct injection car. And if you are familiar or a follower of this channel, I make content about direct injection cars. So ethanol tuning is very common. They are still good for port injection, but not as good. And by the end of the video, you'll know exactly why. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Otherwise, grab a pen if you want to take notes, but strap in, let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the difference between gasoline and ethanol. In this video, we're gonna be talking about gasoline as a pure E0 with no ethanol content and ethanol, which is gonna be E100, 100% ethanol. Ethanol is a corn-based product. Gasoline, obviously, that is the fuel that you pump into your car. Is it always E0? Not all the time, but for this video, we're gonna talk about E0, so gasoline, pure gasoline. An important part of understanding why ethanol makes more power is understanding the physical characteristics or the chemical characteristics between gas and ethanol. So the first thing you need to understand is that both of these two fuels have different air fuel ratios, which just means they require different blends of mixes between a certain amount of parts air to every part fuel to have theoretical combustion cycle or air fuel ratio. We can actually just leave it there for our understanding. Let's get into it. So gasoline has an air fuel ratio of 14.7 to one. That is 14.7 parts of air to one part of gasoline. Now ethanol has a air fuel ratio of nine to one. That is nine parts air to one part fuel, ethanol. So what does that mean? That let's just say our engine, for an example, has 14.7 parts air in it, right? To make theoretical combustion or to make the most efficient combustion, you would then need one part gasoline. In juxtaposition, if you have the same amount of air to have the same optimal ratio, you actually need more ethanol. What does that really mean? It requires more ethanol to match the same outcome as it would gasoline. What does that make gasoline? It makes gasoline the more efficient fuel source, better gas mileage. That's why we see lower ethanol or zero ethanol gas at gas stations. Now, the next thing you need to understand is the energy density between gasoline and ethanol. Energy density for our term here, we're gonna measure in the units of kilowatt hours per gallon of fuel. Gasoline has a rough average energy density of 33.7 kilowatt hours per gallon of gasoline. Ethanol conversely has an average energy density of 22.6 kilowatt hours per gallon of ethanol. That means gasoline is also the more energy dense fuel. Now, it sounds like I'm wrong here, right? Everything is telling us so far that gasoline is the more efficient and better you know, energy dense material or chemical, I should say, liquid, gas. It's a little bit of both because we make it from, we, we change it from a liquid to gas in our cycle. But yes, gasoline does have better energy density and is more efficient. And with both of those things, that means that if you're comparing gasoline with ethanol, more ethanol will have to be pumped into the engine to perform the same output as gasoline, which means gasoline is by far the more fuel efficient, dollar efficient for you, 
chemical substance to use to fuel your vehicle. But that is just the surface level. Let's take a deeper dive into what makes ethanol so special and why you can make so much power with it. Before we get further, we need to understand another term, engine knock. Now engine knock is something that if you've tuned cars or you're starting to get into the car world, you know engine knock is bad, it means engine failure. But what really is it? Engine knock is where you have a pocket or a leftover piece of combustible fuel. This could be actually air or fuel itself left in the cylinder that is doing a secondary explosion. It is exploding outside of your normal combustion cycle and it's creating a sound called engine knock. Knock is bad. It's a secondary explosion. When you start to knock, the car goes boom. For essence, in this video, we'll just say, when engines start to knock, it's really, really bad. They fail very, very quickly and they don't drive anymore. So the next term we need to understand in our whole kind of meld of engineering here is the octane number. So we've always heard the octane number when you're thinking about, you know, gasoline at the pump, you know, premium versus, you know, uh, premium versus regular versus whatever it is. Octane number is simply a number that represents a fuel type's resistance to knock. Meaning the better the octane number, the more resistant that fuel is to creating knock in your engine. The worse the number, the more likely you're gonna have knock or create a knock event in your engine, meaning not all that fuel is gonna be combusted, you're gonna get a secondary explosion. Now, to understand how the octane number works, you put your fuel type under compression. So imagine a cylinder, right? You have a square cylinder and you have a material in it before, I'll have a graphic on the screen, and the cylinder pushes that material up until it is fully compressed and causes knock, right? So what you do to find the octane number is you put that fuel in, let's just use premium gas as an example, and you compress it with your cylinder, you compress it, you compress it, you put as much compression as you can until it causes knock. For layman's terms, the octane number of premium gas in the United States is 97. So 97 represents the octane number, which is the numerical representation of when premium fuel begins to knock under compression. Now here's where ethanol starts to win. When you compress ethanol the same amount as you compress premium gas, guess what? It doesn't knock yet. You can actually continue to compress ethanol to an octane number of 109. That means it can go under, ethanol can be in an environment under significantly higher compression. And under significantly higher compression, we're still more resistant to knock. So that means if you take an engine and you tune it around regular fuel and it's right on the line, all you have to do is introduce ethanol into that fuel source and all of a sudden you then increase your level of safety from a knock event. Conversely, if you use more, a, a larger amount of a fuel type that doesn't have knock, you can push it further and increase the compression ratio of your car. We're not there yet, but you can start seeing this all come together, right? Now, one important thing to understand is adding ethanol is not a linear slope. You don't have linear benefit, and that's why you don't see cars tuned at 100% ethanol. It doesn't happen. You have what's called flex fuel, or a mixture of gasoline and ethanol. We've called it flex fuel from old Ford tests, from the flex fuel sensors that you used to be able to get from Cobb, but we've always called it flex fuel or, you know, basically that, corn tunes. The short answer is ethanol has a diminishing value. So ethanol adds quite a bit of value until you've mixed about 30 or 40%. Now from 40 to 100% mixture, you still have an increase in benefit, but your increase is so small that the diminishing fuel economy, because you need to use more ethanol, you know, in the cycle, makes it so it doesn't really add value. So the sweet spot is from zero to 40%. 40% is where you get your peak benefit from the ethanol before that, that increase really starts to taper out and then you're just spending more and more and more in fuel costs. So don't, don't lose me yet. You gotta have a blend. That's the best way to go about it. Now, ethanol also has another significant benefit to gasoline, which further allows more power to be made. It has a cooling effect. Now this is the coolest part. This is the coolest part about you know, physics, chemistry, engineering. So, and this is, this is also the part that distinguishes between direct injection versus port injection. So what ethanol does or what any fuel type does when it gets injected into your car is it needs to change from a liquid state 
to a gas state. It has to go through a phase change. Now, when it goes through a phase change, it consumes energy to do so. It uses the energy in the surrounding area to go through that phase change. And this is all done by something called the heat of vaporization, which means a certain amount of heat or heat energy needs to be consumed from the surrounding area to create the phase change to go from a liquid to a gas. Now, there is some, there is quite a lot of computation here. We're going to skip to the point where I tell you that the heat of vaporization for ethanol requires significantly more surrounding heat to create the phase change than for gasoline. What am I saying? When you put gasoline in, it requires an X constant of surrounding energy or heat to make the phase change to be able to combust the fuel as a gas or vapor in reality. Ethanol requires a lot more. So what does this do? As the ethanol is introduced into the system, it pulls four and a half times the amount of heat or energy, heat energy, out of your system, right, to then be combusted, which means it is dropping the temperature in your cylinder four and a half times more than gasoline. This is a big advantage. Now, it gets even larger when you have a direct injection car like this, where ethanol or the mix between ethanol and gasoline is sprayed into the cylinder itself and not somewhere ported down the intake line, right? So you're getting significantly better energy withdrawal for that phase change out of your cylinder environment, cooling that cylinder. Now, that four and a half times is with E100. So when you blend it, it's not as high, but you're still getting like, let's say you do a 40% blend. It is, it's not linear again. You're getting about a two X, you know, it's about twice as efficient cooling that cylinder. What happens when that cylinder environment, that capsule of energy gets cooler before your combustion cycle? It reduces your chance of knock. The cooler the engine runs, the less likely it is to knock. So this is where the beauty is, both with a better octane number, because if you even forget about the cooling effect, better an octane number basically means higher compression, which also means higher boost and better ignition timing, but you also get the cooling effect. So what ethanol allows you to do, right, is it increases your threshold for knock significantly, and you can run much higher compression and therefore much higher boost and better ignition timing. And what does this mean? Significantly more power. Now, there have been large organizations that have tested this. Ford is a great example. They've done flex fuel on a lot of their vehicles. A lot of their stock vehicles are able to take flex fuel or mixed gasoline and ethanol and you've seen it a lot on things like WRXs and STIs, like I have here, where they are direct injection. Well, actually more common on WRXs actually than STIs, but that's for different reasons. But the short answer is that's exactly why ethanol makes more gas. You can literally run more power through higher compression, better ignition timing, and more boost, and a few other characteristics in the tuning in the tuning area of the world. That's a whole nother video in and of itself. But the short answer is that's why you can make more power. It's actually incredible. And even when you make more power, you're still not as close to the knock threshold, which means when a tuner is looking at your car and making power with ethanol, even if they push the same relative percentage of change, they're more insulated against a knock event, which keeps your engine better protected in the long run. Now, there is a lot to be said around long-term use of ethanol tuning with these cars. And the overwhelming answer is long-term use of mixed fuel does a couple things. It's not great for your car. I'll just say it. But I think the bigger part of that story is the fact that running a tune and higher power over the long term isn't as good. Every time you do an engine tear down and someone makes a video about ethanol use being bad for your vehicle, deposits, all these kinds of things, we forget kind of the piece of it that they're running a higher power vehicle, probably more power than the car was designed to take for longer periods of time under whatever kind of duressing driving conditions. At a engineering, physical, chemistry level, ethanol isn't as good for these cars. It leaves deposit, it can leave gunk. The ethanol regulated industry isn't the same. Yes, it's pure ethanol, it should be perfect, it should be all these things. The short answer is you might build up a little bit more carbon within your engine and a little bit more depository stuff over the long run with ethanol. You're gonna do that anyways with these cars if they're tuned because a lot of tuning takes safeties off different areas. It depends on the tuner, it depends on the car, the approach. More often than not, you've got a different characteristic stack on your ECU, you're dumping fuel differently, 
you know, unless it's perfect, you're going to build up stuff anyways. A great example is the amount of carbon that builds up in front of these W inside of these WRXs. You know, you even have to blast them off after 50, 60,000 miles and you kind of rinse and repeat. That's because they're direct injection. You know, they conversely direct injection because the fuel is going straight in there. You get a little bit more buildup. If there's any crap in there, it doesn't end up higher in the stack where the fuel would be coming in through some type of forward injection. Hopefully that gave you guys a really good understanding about, well, actually, hopefully that gave you enough of an understanding about why ethanol makes more power than gasoline and gave you a foundational knowledge to why, and you're not just hearing it from everybody saying, oh, it's good, it's bad, it's bad for your car, it's good for your engine. Now at least you know why you would run it, and honestly, it might affect what you choose to buy. Direct injection cars, if you plan on tuning them and you can do some ethanol tuning, there's a lot of power to be made with not a lot of money. It's amazing what you can do with an ethanol tune or a flex fuel tune. I don't know if we call that any, call it flex fuel tuning or flex tuning or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's changing a little with the EPA stuff. The short answer is for not a lot of money, if you could throw some ethanol in there, you can make massive amounts of power. Even with some of these cars, you used to make like, you know, $1,500 to get an ethanol tuned and have some of the supporting modifications could make you, you know, maybe 40% more than $5,000 worth of parts and other aspects of the car. Usually these cars, there's enough openness in the vehicle that just an ethanol tune with the supporting things to run ethanol is enough to get a significant amount of power. Certainly with my WRX, if I were to do full bolt-ons and ethanol, I've got to replace the transmission because I'm going to make so much power just with my stock motor pretty safely with an ethanol tune that the transmission is the weak point. So um, that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know this is not a very WRX specific video. If you did enjoy it and you stuck this far through, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions, fire them in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this kind of video where we talked a little bit more about like the physics around cars, please let me know because I enjoy making these videos. I'm just not convinced you guys enjoy watching them. So let me know in the comments and I will see you guys there.